Welcome to Bezalel Flags. I'm Thomas Schwabi, and today I want to share uh, a little bit from my illustration uh, entitled The Beholder of Visions. The Beholder of Visions. Uh, you know, the Hebrew word for the word seer is uh, the word uh, hosa. It's also uh, the word ra'a. And the word hosa actually means a beholder of visions or a, uh, a stargazer. A beholder of visions, a stargazer. And you know, that's a whole uh, in, uh, realm of the spirit of, of gift and, and function of the Holy Spirit is uh, to um, uh, enable us to see into the spirit realm by dreams and by visions. And as I've often used uh, and shared in many of my illustrations, uh, the, the Hebrew word haza underneath the eye, which I often use in many of my illustrations again, whether it's a lion or an eagle or just the, the logo of the blue eye. And uh, that word is the, uh, a word meaning to contemplate with pleasure, to uh, gaze at mentally, uh, to behold, to see, to have a vision of, to select for oneself and to provide. Jews in many different contexts in uh, the scriptures, but I, again, like I've mentioned many times, and I got to re-mention it again, um, I like Bobby Connor's definition, which he personally shared with me quite, uh, uh, a few years ago, and basically he told me that's the strongest uh, word in the Hebrew language used for focus, and I was really blown away and amazed by that, because I didn't find that in a, uh, that was not found in a commentary, that I, I never found that in a com commentary. But I was blessed because that word focus to me is very important because focus is a law of the spirit. You know, whatever you focus on, uh, you make room for. And whatever you focus on, you feed. And whatever you focus on grows. And so the focus is a law of the spirit. You know, it's been said that when you pay attention to something, attention is like currency. So the measure that you use will be the measure which you receive. And... Uh, to him who has more shall be given to him who does not have even what he thinks he has will be taken away from him um, you know like attention and focus is very important that we pay attention um, like Jesus would often say he who has an ear let him hear or you could say he who has an eye let him see I just recently had a dream and in part of the dream I was looking at a CD and it had written on something on it and I looked closer and the, the writing said what you see you be what you see, you be. So it's important to to uh, uh, lock into and to dial yourself into what God shows you, and to behold that thing, to uh, play it in your mind's eye, um, to entertain it, and to uh, visualize it over and over. Because what you behold from God, from the source of light, will alter you and change you. It will cause you to become. It's the principle of beholding. What you behold, you will become eventually. Um, uh, what you see inside you will eventually live outside. You know, uh, once the Lord said to me, um, the land which you, you are entering into is a land which you first dwelt in within. So you live within. The future is within you. You begin to see the future from within the inner eyes. You know, the inner eyes of the spirit. Uh, you begin to see uh, outside of time and space because God is outside of time and space. And so he begins to take something from the future and show it to you. And you begin to look at it, gaze upon it. He takes a chapter of the book of your life in the future, shows you it so you can begin to behold it and synchronize with it inside to act it out, to live it out within. And then to take the steps by wisdom, to take the steps towards that so that you may... Uh, fulfill that on earth that the word would become flesh and make its dwelling where it's tangible in this uh, third dimension that which is in the fourth dimension of the realm of the spirit of dreams and visions becomes flesh in this third dimension and it's tangible it's lived out and so the beholder of visions you know I received this illustration from the Lord many years ago and I, I remember sketching the eye and and I thought you know I'd like to sketch an eagle eye and have an eagle inside of it looking out and so as I sketched that um, I noticed too that uh, I, I wanted to draw the eagle within the larger eye just kind of looking out and and he was to this towards the side and um, eventually when I got to finishing the eagle I, I kind of I, I noticed that you know the the eye of the eagle within the larger eye actually became the pupil of the larger eye so it was like it, it became it's two in one you know it's like it, it, it fulfilled the rest and and so uh, you know that 
that eagle represents the the spirit of prophecy. You know, uh, the the metaphor of the prophetic uh, is the eagle. The eagle speaks of the prophetic ministry. Is speaks of the visionary realm of the seeing perceiving realm and so this eagle inside the larger eagle is a spirit of prophecy if you will it's like it's like the spirit of prophecy in the prophet it's like another set of windows you know there is a uh, eye is like the eyes are like windows which we look through but inside there's another pair of eyes if you will that look through and see a whole nother realm and dimension uh, that look into a higher, loftier realm, the realm of the spirit. And that's where God begins to reveal things to us by dreams and by visions. We begin to see in that seer realm, in that dimension where um, we begin to see the unseen. And you know, sometimes these two can become so one, like in the picture, they synchronize so that you begin to see with your physical eyes what's there that any other person uh, could not see. But it would be there just as real as a staff is right here. I could see an angel just as solid as that or a demon, something in the darkness of the dark realm. And that has occurred before and that's when God synchronizes the two, allows you to begin to see with your natural eyes. Uh, your spirit eyes and your natural eyes become one and you begin to see the unseen realm. So the visionary realm, the, the, the large eagle uh, uh, represents the prophet as well. The prophet sees uh, within, he sees within uh, in the unseen realm. He can perceive and see things within and sense things and visionary, see within what's not there. So he's looking at you, but at the same time his inner eyes are looking unto the Lord and seeing what the Lord is showing him and perceiving that as well. So, you know, but again, as I use often and mentioned before, the color blue is a, is a color for the spirit of revelation. It's the color for communion and revelation. Communion and revelation. And uh, that's the, the color, the uh, blue, I, I want to share quickly uh, um, where this has, that blue eye came from. You can see I'm wearing that on my shirt as well. The blue eye uh, comes out of a supernatural uh, visionary experience that I had many years ago, and I've shared this as well in other illustrations. Um, but uh, many years ago, as I was laying on the floor soaking and, and just focusing on Jesus, and I was exercising my imagination, which God has called us to. You know that... Uh, the the first commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your your mind, and your strength. And the the, the part of the the mind is actually the Hebrew word, uh, or the word Greek word dianoia, and it actually means your imagination. So God is saying we love Him even with our imagination. So it's it's very scriptural for you to shut your eyes and to visualize Jesus, to picture Him. And uh, like I've often shared to people, the uh, the the best way you can do that, and the most safe way you can do that is to read the um, the prophets' uh, depictions of what they saw, the Son of Man, how they saw God, how they saw Jesus, uh, how they described what they saw, and picture, try to picture it as best as you can in your mind's eye to frame that picture in your mind and, and behold it, because it's, we're exhorted to set our mind on things above, not on earthly things. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Uh, what's eternal, what's in that invisible realm. And it says in Isaiah that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, on him, whose mind is lock, uh, locked, focused, and centered on him. And so the blue eye, going back to that encounter, so I was soaking on the floor, and in the encounter I, I, was, I was like walking down a path, and I saw this large bird come and land in the middle of the path. It was kind of a speckled colored bird, and so I went up to it to want to look at it, and as I was walking towards it the Lord stepped into the pathway and he put his arm out and basically forbid me to go towards this bird and as I stopped the, the bird took off, it turned and looked at me and it had a very black deep dark black eye and then it took off flew off and, and then shortly after that a pure white eagle came and landed right on the path and had gold tail on and I was able to go up to that eagle to that bird and look into its eye it turned its head and I looked into its eye and that eye was like that blue ultramarine blue color and it, it had that ultramarine color that drew me in and sucked me into the it and so and then I came up out of that experience and I was pretty amazed and it was an interactive vision uh, I was learning how to uh, see in the spirit and uh, and so like I began to come out of that and and I was really amazed with that and and I really felt like, uh, you know, I'd like to paint that eagle one day, Lord, the entire eagle, the pure white eagle with the gold tail lines and that blue eye. And I've not yet fully painted the entire eagle, but 
many of my illustrations depict the, that eye that I saw, which represents the spirit of revelation, which represents Jesus. Because, you know, he is uh, the ex he, he, all those expressions are of him. They're manifestations of who he is. He is the eagle. He is the son of man. He's the ox. He is the lion as well. And so he wants to come and reveal himself and express himself in different manifestations of who he is and functions of who he is. And so the blue eye, again, it's the spirit of revelation. It's the spirit of uh, the blue mist of God. It's the spirit uh, that, that makes us to see, enlightens the eyes of our understanding, or, or the Greek word for imagination, so that we might know uh, God better, so that we might know the hope to which he's called us and the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints, which are the spiritual blessings of the Lord as sons that we have inherited as sons. And, and so, uh, you know, the spirit of revelation begins to show us these things. He begins to make these things known. You know, God is the God who reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. And he wants to take from what is his and which is spirit and make it known to us. In uh, Numbers, it talks about, is there a prophet among you? I will reveal myself or make myself known to him by dreams and by visions. God wants to reveal himself by dreams and by visions. He wants to make himself known, and he does that by revelation, by showing us things, uh, making things known to us, and uh, by vision and revelation, particularly uh, the seer realm, that seer visionary realm, God wants to show us things that exist, and these things that we see in the spirit realm are real. They're they're more real than this realm. It's a spiritual substance. You know, this world was created out of the spiritual substance of God, out of light. God spoke the worlds into being, and that speech, that language, was an image within Him. He saw the birds of the air. He saw the ocean and all the living creatures uh, inside the water. He saw the plants and the trees, the snakes and the bears and the horses, and he saw us. He, he framed us. He framed it all within. He conceived it within. He spoke it. And when he spoke, there was such power in that, that to this day, things are still coming coming into existence from that very first word so you know he wants us to begin to see as he sees you know one time the lord said to me see what i see you will see and so many many times in the past uh and in, in, in the years that i've walked with the lord i've seen things that he is he has already seen that he's shown me and that's the blessing of of just becoming closer drawing closer and closer to the lord just being a friend of god you know it's I've heard it many times say the prophet is a friend of God. No, God wants to have friends. He, uh, uh, it was Moses says, I would that all God's people were prophets. You see, we all are sheep and can hear the voice of God and see what he sees. Because he, we're creative in our imagination. God's given us that faculty of the imagination to begin to see and to perceive, to look through those other pair of eyes, those window, that other window, uh, and see into the unseen realm. God wants to enlighten our eyes. He wants us to make make us to see, enlighten, to make to see, to to brighten us up, um, so that we might begin to perceive things that are there. And we're exhorted to be those that mind heavenly things. And so the beholder of visions is also as, uh, known as a stargazer. You know, the heavenly bodies have a speech, a language. They It says in the Psalms that night by night they utter forth their speech. And that's a whole other realm and dimension that I love to get into and uh, begin to become sensitive to is that the speech of the heavenly bodies. In Genesis, God said he put lights uh, uh, in the night. He created the, the lights, the greater light to to rule the day and the lesser lights to rule the night. The lesser light to rule the night, speaking of the moon. He also placed stars in place that... And uh, so that they would give knowledge to the earth for, uh, of times and seasons. You know, the times and seasons in the spirit can be known by looking forth into the heavenly bodies as well. And it's a whole other realm of this seared realm that it's not talked about very much. And it's something that I'd love to get into, um, but I have not got into much of that, very little. But that's one of the functions of the seer and the seer gift, the beholder of visions, the stargazer. Is he could look into the heavenly bodies and he could see uh, the utter and understand the speech of the stars, the speech of the heavenly bodies. You know, the astrologers were, God used the astrologers in the birth of Jesus. 
He used the stargazers. He used people that understood times and seasons, understood the prophecies in the stars. And they were by the stars led to Jesus' birth place where he was. And they beheld his glory and they brought gifts. And they, it, was, it was awesome that God would use the astrologers. Now we know that astrology, everything that, that uh, is uh, counterfeit, uh, perverted, is because there's a true. We wouldn't have a counterfeit unless there's a true. And God chose the stargazers. He chose true astrologers that understood heavenly language, the bo heavenly body speech. And so, um, you know, that's something that is still, I believe, uh, existing. And it's a whole other realm and language that we need to, um, as the Lord pulls us towards that, to grab hold of that, to learn, to sit into the classroom of the Spirit and understand, be taught those things, which I love to be able to do. Um, so again, the beholder of visions, you know, it's a spirit of prophecy inside the prophet. It's the set of, it's a, it's a eyes within, you know. Uh, I'm thinking about the, the prophet and, and his servant where they were being surrounded with all kinds of chariots. And, and he was freaking out, the, the prophet's servant. Uh, and he just cried out. And, and the prophet cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, and, and when his eyes were opened, he saw around about him that there were more chariots of, uh, on their side than there was in the natural. See, his eyes were open. Those inner eyes that he had, the spirit of prophecy, the prophetic spirit, the seer realm was opened up to him. And he began to see there was more on his side, on their side, than, uh, than there was in the natural, the enemy coming against them. And so when you begin to have that kind of sight, that kind of vision, you get bold and, and confident, not in your own self, but confident that God is with you because you see the reality around you that's greater and loftier than this natural reality. And that's the seer, visionary, beholder of visions realm that we want to like walk in and we want to be open to. We want our eyes to be blessed and see and to perceive and not to be spiritually blinded. And so his eyes were open to see into the unseen realm. He saw with those other eyes within. And he saw with the eyes of his spirit, that spirit of revelation illuminated him in his inward parts, opened his eyes so he can see into the spirit realm. And so that's, uh, that was another story regarding the seeing realm where one was able to uh, begin to see into that unseen realm. And I like to talk about the spirit of wisdom and revelation, uh, which is one of my favorite subjects as well. And that is the spirit that enlightens our eyes as well. Uh, that is the, the spirit of revelation that illuminates us, enables us to see and to perceive, to know things so that we uh, uh, know by experience. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, it enlightens, it makes us to see, it brightens us up within, like the scripture says, the entrance of your voice or your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. His voice is also picture language, it's the picture language of God, like I like to call it the light pictures of God. It comes in and, and it makes us to see and we begin to perceive the voice. Well, the spirit of revelation can come in and bring that, that blue light uh, and begin to bring that light of revelation and we begin to see and in seeing we're enlightened and we know it's like we taste of the realities of the unseen realm the shadow of heavenly things become the reality within us we we when it comes into us we ingest it we read it we eat it and we read it and we eat it we ingest it you know your eyes eat the Lord told me that many years ago it says your eyes eat so whatever you gaze at eventually your eyes will uh, your spirit eyes from your natural eyes into your inner eyes of your Imagination will eventually be ingested in as you continually look at it and visualize. Visualization is like eating in the spirit. When you visualize over and over on an image, you visualize an image and you uh, act it out in your mind's eye, eventually you're ingesting it and eventually that's going to get into you and is set up and established within the, uh, the altar of your heart, your imagination. And that becomes the doorway to the spirit realm. It becomes a link to the spirit realm and the substance of the source of that image is going to produce bear fruit in you eventually and, and you'll produce its fruit eventually. See, because that's, that vision, those images are real spiritual substances. And so like we want to be those who see as he sees, to see what he sees, to begin to um, behold the vision of God and to begin to see him because what you behold, you eventually will become and uh, so you know the the spirit of revelation is uh, his heart's desire the, the 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 lord's desire is to release 
the, the unseen to you so that you we can uh, enter into um, the reality of those things and so the beholder of visions God's calling us into this place to be beholders of vision to be seers all of us are given been given eyes to see all of us have been able to uh, by the spirit are able to by the spirit see the unseen and God is the God of the unseen he he's the God who makes uh, the unseen seen now the visible was made out of the invisible and God wants to show us the invisible of what is yet to come that already is so that we can co-labor with him and participate with him in bringing forth the manifestation of those things on earth as it is in heaven and so I just want to bless you right now and pray that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would bless you give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you might know him better and know the hope to which he's called you and the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints and that you would uh, be your eyes your inner eyes would be open the spirit of prophecy that uh, would come forth upon you and you would begin to see and your eyes would eat your eyes would taste and see that the Lord is good indeed and that you would begin to uh, take in the living word of God uh, and and become it allow it to become a flesh on earth as it is in heaven that you would peer into the scrolls that the worthy lamb the worthy lion is able to open to you and uh, behold those things the things that were written of you which eye has not seen and ear has not heard nor has entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those who love him that those things would enter into your the eyes of your before the eyes of your heart the eyes of your imagination you begin to behold them in Jesus name bless them father just thank you for this time and uh, being able to speak into your life and may the Lord bless you